Hi, this video is about internal model control and this particular method of internal model control is being also used with nonlinear systems or complex systems methods, con con complex systems and the controller designs for that. The objective here is to introduce you to internal model control and to simplify it and to understand that how is it related to PI control or PID controls. This is also similar to the pole placement method, but at the same time if you look at from the uh, perspective of uh, designing this IMD control which we will see uh, its objective turns out to be output disturbance rejection. The name internal model controller derives from the fact that the controller contains the model of the process internally. The, once you see the method for designing this controller, you will understand that if the model of the system is known, then one can design it to uh, design it appropriately for uh, a particular uh, objective which is output disturbance rejection here. And since it uses the model completely, that is the name turns out to be internal model control. Alright, so let us see the method here. It turns out that if I have this particular process P, which is the model of the uh, trans model of the process is known, for example, its transfer function is P, uh, and it is say, say it is fairly accurately known and its estimate is given by P hat. Then if we structure the controller in this way, which involves a particular filter GF, we will come to know about the role of this GF here. And this is what is my P hat in pseudo inverse, because P can be also, the process can be having multiple inputs and multiple outputs. And so the transfer functional matrix can have its pseudo inverse uh, applied here. So it is, it is more or less a general methodology for the output disturbance rejection. So one, one can see that if I am, I am placing it in this way, one can answer by saying, okay, if my GF is equal to 1, for example, it is just a simple way of trying to understand that let us say GF is not at all there and P hat is exactly equal to P, then is it up having the total disturbance rejection, one can find the transfer function between y and d and see to it that it is almost equal to 0. All right. So, but at the same time, uh, what turns out that this controller, when we start this particular controller, when we start writing its transfer function, which is, which is nothing but, um, which is equal to u of s by YSP of S. So, which is output because the controller output is given by U here and the input is YSP. And we, when we write it in a transfer function way, it turns out the, the controller transfer function is given by GF P, in P pseudo inverse by 1 minus GF P pseudo inverse P. If my estimate of the process P hat is equal to P, then what happens? P hat is all is equal to P and GF is equal to, to identity, then this blows up. And that is why GF is playing an important role in designing the controller here. We are not saying that the, the process model is accurately known. Even if there is an estimate available, one should be able to design a controller for the output disturbance rejection here. So, this is a uh, a very generalized methodology where, which is based on the model, but it does not expect that the transfer function should be or the model of the system should be completely known. If it is completely known, then it is a perfect disturbance rejection. But at the same time with the help of a proper design of GF, one can still achieve the very, very good output disturbance rejection here. And GF is also important if, if my P hat is exactly equal to P, so that the controller is not, is, is just not behaving like an infinite controller, infinite uh, system here. All right. Uh, 
So my GF is introduced to optimal system that is less sensitive to modeling errors. So we have some discrepancy between p hat and p. We saw that c is having some kind of a some kind of a matching being done over here with p hat p p p hat pseudo inverse times p hat. So this is my estimate. P hat is an estimate, and this estimate, its inverse and its multiplication is being cancelled out over here. Fair enough. But then this particular pseudo inverse should match with p in order to have the complete output distribution reduction. But this gf, if my p hat inverse and p, so this c block multiplied by p is my control system block, right? So this, this turns out to be in the, uh, is, is the requirement that p hat pseudo inverse p should be equal to identity. If there is a complete match, there is a complete match, complete identity matrix turns out here. But if there is not, then GF can be designed in order to reduce the disturbance thing coming out of uh, disturbance input reaching to the output. So therefore, this GF is playing a role in making sure that even if this is not identity, there is a very less uh, uh, disturbance that is getting affecting the uh, very less disturbance that is getting uh, affecting the output y. All right, is typically gives uh, higher order controllers because now this is my. It is also, uh, I mean, even for the complex systems, one can design the IMC way for designing it, but one can simplify by making some special assumptions so that it gives you a PI or PID controller, right? Let's take certain example in order to motivate you what we are saying with the simplifications that we say. For example, my transfer function or the process is simple FOTD system. Of course, we have already talked about it that even if uh, the system with higher order, uh, higher order system can, can further be uh, we simplified as an FOTD system if my domino in pole is, is, is uh, of that sort. Now approximate inverse, we are not considering any non-causal systems. So we, the, uh, the approximate inverse of this particular um, process is given by 1 plus ST by KP. We are not considering e power minus SL as of now. All right. So this particular filter design, this GF of S is a first order, uh, first order system or a low pass filter design way 1 plus 1 by 1 plus STF here. There the transfer of this particular time period or time constant TF can be selected appropriately as compared to the time constant of the system T. And this particular uh, time delay, if I consider e power minus SL as 1 by 1 minus SL, then one can consider adding this into the uh, approximation here and now C of S becomes 1 plus ST, 1 plus ST by KP S L plus TF. So my transfer function, so this time delay L turns out to be adding to L plus TF. Now what is this form? This form of the controller is nothing but my PI controller. Similarly, if I make a Paddy's approximation to e power minus SL. So I will get e power minus SL equals 1 minus SL by 2 by 1 plus SL by 2. And then one can find C of S given by GF, adding this GF as well uh, as C of S given by 1 plus uh, SL by 2, 1 plus ST. And, and just appropriately making sure that I am incorporating this in these in uh, this in, instead of 1 minus SL form, which can be approximated in, in this way, where my, what, what is the approximation we considered here is that KP S, this particular ta, term STFL by 2 is very small. TF is anyway in my hands, so I can always make sure that it is uh, it is matching with the delay L here. All right. So this particular 
way of understanding is nothing by this is nothing but this C of S turns out to be my PID controller. Try understanding what we are trying what, what we are trying to achieve by representing this IMC concept as a PID control. If I had this C of S design which was mot motivated from the model, model uh, description over here, PI controller design if I go with the pole placement way, we started by saying that okay this is a pole placement, pole placement will also give me something similar results with the, with the approximation of uh, the delay system as 1 minus SL. Same way if I see the IMC way, my transfer function turns out to be again a PI controller. So all these methods to a certain extent are helping us in understanding that if we simplify the process, even the IMC method turns out to be giving us a PI or PID controller. If I interpret this kind of a method in terms of complex systems or the nonlinear systems, we would be able to understand that okay, finally the controllers are of the form of proportional, integral or a derivative controller. Even if the system is nonlinear, even if my controller is nonlinear, its behavior is something, overall behavior is something that can be interpreted as proportional, integral or derivative form. That's all. The, with the IMC way of understanding, we can say that robustness is considered explicitly in the design because of the GF uh, transfer function. Uh, block that we have considered here. It can be adjusted by selecting the filter GF properly. There is always a trade-off between performance and robustness that can be made by using the filter constant as a design parameter. So and this particular trans and this particular design parameter is not nothing but the time constant filter time time constant TF. It can be designed to give excellent response to the set point changes because to certain extent one can see that this is a PID block, all right. One can design it for the, um, the, the feed forward way in order to get the set point changes. So mixed up methodologies can be used to achieve set point changes, output disturbance rejection, robustness, everywhere one has to look into getting the trade off between these two or three things. Especially with the IMC way, there is a trade off between performance and the robustness and performance in terms of the output disturbance rejection. That is all for this video, thank you.